One of the greatest discoveries in 21st century is CRISPR-Cas9, which allows scientists to cut and manipulate our genomic material. So take your scalpel, try to cut the DNA, and replace it with your DNA of interest. No, it doesn't sound so simple, and it doesn't work this way. Just joking. But in this video, I'll be talking about how CRISPR is done, and how scientists even figure out that this kind of genetic tool can be developed or it existed previously. So CRISPR allows us to perform targeted alteration into the genome. And genome is a collection of all the genes present in a cell at a particular point of time. But how does this can be achieved? So CRISPR stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats, a mouthful term, right? So CRISPR is actually a sequence information which is present in our in bacterial genome and it is regularly interspersed and repetitive in nature. That's why it's called palindromic repeats. And there is a protein which is associated with CRISPR locus, which is known as CRISPR-associated protein 9, which works like a molecular caesar. We're going to talk about this mechanism in a moment. But CRISPR can be understood as a defense mechanism against viruses that are E. coli use against phage viruses. So the phage viruses are the key enemies of E. coli which infect them and kill them. So virus has developed a defense mechanism which is embedded in their genome and which is in terms of a DNA sequence, CRISPR locus, and a Cas gene which is producing a protein, Cas9. Now, the sequence information of the CRISPR locus is strikingly similar to the sequence information present in the FAD genome. Scientists scratch their head why these sequence informations are identical and similar. What is the consequence of that? Or what is the cause of that? One hypothesis is when the FAD infected the bacteria and the FAD genetic material is inside the bacteria and try to get integrated into the bacterial genome, these sequences remain incorporated in the CRISPR locus. Now, once the sequence get incorporated into the CRISPR locus, they become a part of the bacterial genome. And let's say there is a second infection by the same fudge. Now, this CRISPR locus would create specific RNA, which is targeting the phage genome. And the Cas gene product, which is Cas9, would get associated with that RNA, which is produced by the CRISPR locus called guide RNA and another RNA called tracer RNA and ultimately this Cas9 along with this tracer and guide RNA would cleave the fudge genome. Now once the fudge genome is cleaved using this CRISPR Cas9 system the fudge DNA would be degraded and that is how the bacteria protects itself from phage viruses. And that's, that's how it works. It's a bacterial adaptive immune system. So precise and beautiful. Scientists learned about this thing. It, it's a definitely interesting phenomena. But how does scientists figure out they can use this system to manipulate our own genome? A system which is present in bacteria and they use it for their own immune response. Scientists can now manipulate that and try to use it for gene man manipulation. So scientists at early 21st century took biochemist approach, which is fairly simple. They know this CRISPR-Cas9 can cleave a particular region of DNA in a sequence specific manner. So they can, in a test tube, they can put DNA, they can put the guide RNA, tracer RNA and the Cas9 and expect that it would cleave it. And definitely they can understand the result by running it into the agarose gel electrophoresis, very simple. And they can see if the Cas9 has done its job, then they would obtain cleaved bands of different sizes, smaller than the uncleaved one. Now, this is pretty interesting. Now, scientists ask the question that can we use different, different guide RNA to target this system into a specific region. If it is true 
then in the agarose gel electrophoresis depending upon which type of guide RNA or which combination of guide RNA we are using we are going to get different band sizes and that's what scientists observed depending upon which type of guide RNA they are using they're able to obtain different size and different length of the bands that means changing the guide RNA sequence they can really target this cleaving mechanism and that was the turning point and that told scientists that really we can use this system to manipulate any genome of our interest provided we know the sequence information and can target our cleaving machinery to that particular location it's like a very targeted at very much targeted attack now CRISPR can be performed on many cell types including human cells and human stem cells so let's look at it so this is a human stem cell and if you target one particular genomic locus with CRISPR and try to cut it what happens is inside our cell there are repairing mechanism which would try to repair the cut or repair the damage such that we can have a genomic integrity right and there are the mechanisms that are followed in the eukaryotic cells are non-homologous enjoining or homology dependent repair but here is a trick that we can play let's say we have targeted our CRISPR machinery to a particular genomic locus where we want to make a cut and it has produced a double strand break and we want to create a point mutation now when this double stranded break would be repaired by homologous dependent recombination then we provide our repair oligo which would be incorporated in that broken strand and this repair oligo contains one mutation and now the repaired strand by our own repair machinery which would incorporate a mutated version and that's how we can incorporate point mutations not only that this point mutations could lead to dramatic changes and many of the disease associated point mutations can be studied using this approach also the double stranded break can be repaired by a donor plasmid containing a sequence let's say gfp or let's say a reporter gene that is how we can create a knock in line or knock in reporter as if we are genetically tagging that gene or the gene product would be labeled and that is how we can perform knock ins not only these things crispr can be used for diverse of functions like for example crispr can be used for genetic manipulation creating knockouts knock ins point mutations etc CRISPR can be used to label genomic locus. So there is a uh, emerging field known as CRISPR fish or CRISPR mediated fluorescence in situ hybridization. You can understand that CRISPR is a targeting mechanism by which we can target a specific genomic locus. And then if you, instead of cutting it, you can tag it with a fluorophore, then we can identify that. Not only that, CRISPR can be used to manipulate transcription as well using specific CRISPR driven constructs we can activate or inactivate a gene of interest in a spatiotemporal manner now the futuristic goal is to make a gene therapy using CRISPR based approaches now that is uh, it for this particular video but in subsequent video I'll be talking about the use of CRISPR how CRISPR was developed and how we can perform CRISPR in human cell lines. So for now, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you and stay tuned till the next video.